after spending two amazing weeks on Vancouver Island, we're back on the mainland and we're officially starting our final drive up to Alaska. Over the next 12 days, we'll be driving over 3,000 kilometers from here in Vancouver up to the Alaska and Canada border, taking the Alaska Highway the majority of the way and making as many stops as we can. And for the first stretch of the drive, we're going to be road tripping up the Sea to Sky Highway, which is an over 150 kilometer stretch of Highway 99 that connects Vancouver to Pemberton, just north of Whistler. And tonight we're heading back to our favorite campground in the area, Porto Cove. This is now actually the third time we've shared this campground on the vlog. The second time was just a couple weeks ago and the first time was one of our first vlogs and let's just say it was an experience. There's so much wind right now, the tent's shaking. I thought that the tent was gonna collapse on us and we were going to suffocate and die. Um, there was also this train, so our campsite was right by a train track. When the tent was shaking and the train was loud, I was like, oh my gosh, is the train coming for us? But minus the train noise, which we hardly noticed last time, this is such an amazing campground. And this time we have site number 43 and we have this amazing view at our site. One neat thing about this park is not only is it beautiful from the ground level, but it's also an underwater park. There's a man-made reef and three sunken ships, and it's a popular spot for scuba divers. wanted to make coffee out here. Despite the rain, we're still doing it. As you can tell, the view we had from our campsite is no longer here. It's definitely not the weather we hoped for today, but we're gonna do the best with what we've got. There are tons of great hikes in the area that overlook the Howe Sound and mountains, but one of our favorite short yet steep hikes is the trail up to the Quercus viewpoint at Murren Provincial Park. We made it to the top and we have a much better view than we thought we would. You can see the mountains, you can see the water. We fully expected to get up here and it just be an entire wall of clouds. So we are so happy. We've driven the Sea to Sky Highway many, many times in the past. And no matter how many times we come out here, it's just one of those places that just takes your breath away every single time. Just down the road from Murren Provincial Park is Shannon Falls. It's 335 meters high, making it the third highest falls in all of British Columbia. You can catch a quick glimpse of it from the road, but it's just a super short walk from the parking area to see it up close.
right next to Shannon Falls is the Sea to Sky Gondola, which is one of our favorite stops on the Sea to Sky Highway. The gondola takes you up 885 meters and has amazing views of the area and a fun suspension bridge. You can also hike to the top, which is mega steep, and then take the gondola down. The gondola costs 62 Canadian round trip, and since we've already done it two times before, we're skipping it this time, but we highly recommend it. One of the most popular towns on the Sea to Sky Highway is Squamish, which is named after the Squamish Nation. It's one of the adventure capitals of Canada. There's tons of climbing, mountain biking, hiking, and windsurfing. And something we didn't expect to find here, New Zealand real fruit ice cream. We're at Allison Braum, which as we mentioned is New Zealand style real fruit ice cream. And the coolest part is they actually make it right in front of you. They take the ice cream and the fruit, put it in this really unique machine, then it mixes it all up, swirls it up onto a cone. It was just one of the most unique ice cream experiences we've ever had. They have four different fruit flavors you can choose from. And I got raspberry and it's dripping, so I'm gonna try it before it just melts. Mmm. <laughs> oh yeah. That takes me back to my childhood, having those raspberry creamsicles. You can taste like the little chunks of fruit in there so you know it's super fresh. This is heavenly. <laughs> oh yeah. And that is super fresh, little tart, creamy. Oh heck yeah, that's so good. As if we needed another reason to go to New Zealand, this just add it to the list. Mm. Don't worry, we didn't forget about Kona. We got her the scoop dog. <laughs> what we got you? <laughs> I want to ask you. <laughs> She's like, okay, you're gonna get a brain freeze. <laughs> Half of the proceeds from the scoop dog go to the local SPCA. So Kona, you're helping out a doggy that needs a home. Oh, crunchy. What's pretty crazy is that our drive from Vancouver to Alaska is only a little bit shorter than our drive from Austin, Texas to Vancouver. So we keep thinking being here in Canada, we're almost to Alaska. And I guess if you look at the timeline, we are because we'll be there in about 12 days or so. But if you look at the map, we're only a little over halfway there. For our final stop today, we're at Brandywine Falls, which is a 70 meter waterfall. And it's just a quick walk from the parking area. What's pretty crazy about this waterfall is that it looks huge, but it's about a fifth of the size of Shannon Falls, which really puts into perspective just how massive Shannon Falls is. Views out here are just ridiculous. We've had a hard time finding free camping in Canada. We've been paying for campsites every night since we've been here. But tonight we found a free camping area near Whistler. It's nothing glamorous. It's basically just a gravel parking lot, but it's free and it's convenient to Whistler so we can explore more of the area tomorrow. We're 
We're starting our morning in Whistler in Whistler Village, which is a charming pedestrian-only ski village with cafes, shops, and restaurants. It is home to Whistler Blackcomb, which is the largest ski resort in all of North America, and in the summertime becomes a mountain biking paradise. Also, Whistler was home to part of the 2010 Vancouver Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. You can see the iconic five interlocking Olympic rings and the original cauldron that was lit to signify the opening of the games. Kona, congrats on your gold medal. What did you get it in? Catching tweets, watch this. Besides skiing and mountain biking, Whistler is home to some incredible hikes and we've been lucky enough to do a few of them over the years, but unfortunately we're here the last day of May and it's too early in the season to do any of the high altitude hikes due to snow. Since we couldn't hike up into the mountains, our plan B was to take the gondola, but it's pretty pricey and we found out that most things to do up there are still closed due to snow, so we're skipping it this time, which we're pretty bummed about. So if you plan to visit Whistler, we definitely recommend coming mid-June or later, that way more things are open for you. Thankfully, there's a pretty unique hike close to town that's accessible right now, the Whistler train wreck. There's a sign at the trailhead that says bear in area and we actually saw a bear while driving into town this morning just off the side of the road. This always seems to happen when we don't have the camera ready but it was very very cool and we saw evidence of a bear right by the trailhead here if you know what I mean. So we're making Lots of noise, we have bear spray, singing songs, telling the bear that we are here, we're not gonna hurt you, you're not gonna hurt us, we're all gonna have fun. We found a bear, watch out. This is what you do when you see a bear, you poke them in the eyes. No. I really don't do that. This is what you do if you see Never a bear. Never approach a bear. This water is gorgeous and this suspension bridge is really bouncy! <laughs> wow, these are super colorful. The history behind this train crash was in 1956. It was loaded with lumber and it came into an area under construction at over twice the speed limit and it crashed off the rails. As far as we know, no one died in this train crash. And then a little later, a local logging company was hired to use their big logging machines to move the train cars off the track to where they sit today. Some of the cars were salvageable, so they brought the ones that weren't out here and they're now just scattered through the forest and covered in graffiti and you can walk around and check them out. <laughs> These are the biggest mosquitoes I've ever seen. It's getting us prepared for Alaska. <laughs> similar to the plane crash that we hiked to in Tofino on Vancouver Island. It always feels a little weird to visit a crash site for fun, but just like that one, we don't believe anyone died during this train wreck, which makes it feel a little less weird. It's still a bit eerie though, but man, very, very unique. Yesterday we had New Zealand real fruit ice cream. Today we're having an Australian food item, meat pies from Peaked Pies. A meat pie is a handheld pie made of pastry dough and some goodies inside. I got the chunky steak and mushroom and I got this one peaked with mashed potatoes, green mushy peas, and then you can see some gravy drizzled down over the top. Mm. 
that is super delicious. That just tastes like you take everything from a Sunday roast dinner and just combine it all into one bite. The, the flaky crust is so flaky and crispy. The meat is so savory and chunky. The gravy just kind of brings it all together. It's hearty, savory, delicious. Oh yeah, that steak is so tender. I'm gonna try the mushy peas by themselves. Tastes like peas mushed up. The filling on the inside of this meat pie is like the perfect ratio of, you know, gravy to meatiness in there. It's not too dry, not too wet. It's perfect. Good night, mate. This one's for Glenn. We also got a flat white because our fun for the day is over and we now have many hours of work ahead of us. There's obviously a lot more to do along the Sea to Sky Highway as well as in Whistler. So for more ideas, check out our website. We have a Sea to Sky Highway guide that has many more tips based on all of our mini trips up to this area. But for the rest of the day, we're headed to the library because they have super fast Wi-Fi, back to the same campsite as last night. And then tomorrow, we're continuing our drive towards the Alaska Highway. I might eat hers. <laughs> I want to eat Kona's ice cream because it looks really good minus the dog treat. Oh <laughs> no, 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 Kona. <laughs>